Hello there. Good to see you again and welcome to another Art Attack. Now then, are your pencils and art materials lying scattered all over the place? You know what you need? Somewhere special to keep them. How's about inside a paint tube? Nah, far too small. How's about inside a big paint tube? <laughs> too big. You know what you need? You need an Art Attack paint tube to keep all your art stuff in. Come and have a look at this. Take an empty washing-up liquid bottle, take the squeezy top off and thoroughly wash it out. And when it's dry, cut the bottom of the bottle. Now, these plastic bottles can be quite difficult to cut. And you know my motto, if it's difficult, get someone else to do it. Then cut the top two centimetres from this sloping neck. And the idea is to keep two centimetres of the body on, cut all the way round, apart from about two centimetres, so you've got a waggling hinge. Then squeeze the bottom of the bottle to get the shape of your paint tube and securely tape it into that position. Now, you can take a lot of time doing that. I don't get that much time on Art Attack, so I'm just doing it quickly to show you. Then take a sheet of newspaper, close the newspaper and place a ruler at the bottom and then just roll the ruler inside the newspaper like that and then take the ruler out and wrap that rolled piece of newspaper around the bottom of your tube overlap it there and where it overlaps again tape it thoroughly and securely into place I'll just put another one on there to show you again you put loads of tape on now to make the top of your paint tube take the lid of a plastic drinks bottle or a plastic milk bottle I'm going to take this one here, place that on the top there like that, and that will be the lid of your paint tube. And again, just tape that into place. Make it as neat as you can. Just pushing it on there like that and put the tape around the edges. And then to neaten the whole thing up and make it nice and secure, mix some PVA glue with a little bit of water. Now, you've seen this PVA glue before. It's the old school glue you get in the white squidgy bottles. In fact, I use this so often, people are starting to call this Art Attack glue. So I'll just paste some of that onto that top there. And you know what I'm going to do. You've seen me do this before. A bit of papier mache. Put little bits of newspaper on there. And the idea is to just press the newspaper down into all those nooks and crannies. And again, you can take your time doing that. And do exactly the same with the tube itself. To neaten it up, slop on your glue and stick on bigger strips of newspaper to cover all those gaps and all those joins and it's very important that you put some bigger strips on and overlap them down inside your tube and just turn that around there to show you just overlap them about two centimeters inside the tube you don't want to go all the way down just about two centimeters and do that all around the tube cover the tube in the same way and when it's done you'll have something that looks like that. Look at that, and it's gone hard and strong and really finished it off. Now, to get the tube to stay closed when you close it, you need to make a cardboard collar. And the best way to do that is to draw around a ruler onto an empty cereal box, so you've got a strip of cereal box card, and then just place your paint tube down and paste some glue around those overlapped newspaper bits just inside the edge there that's why I overlapped the newspaper very important that and then just roll your strip of cereal box card and pop it inside like that and allow it to spring out into shape and then get your fingers in there and spring it out into shape so that it's a perfect fit and you could always just close it just to test that it's a good fit but make sure you open it to dry it out and when it's dry you could paint it now you could do any paint tube design you like you could copy a real paint tube or you could make your own one up but I find it's a good idea to paint it white to start with on the paint tube itself I'm just slopping that on there to show you and then you could always paint the metal bits a sort of grey or a grey silver and when you've done the whole thing again you take your time doing it, poster paint or acrylic paint. And when it's done, it looks something 
like that. And see what I've done here? I've painted it white, I've painted the metal bits a grey silver, I've painted the lid black, and I've even put on a strip of red here to show what colour paint is inside my paint tube. And to design the label itself, I've copied a real paint tube, I've written on red, you can write on Art Attack or you can write on your own name, because after all, it is your paint tube, and all these other little bits and pieces and details I've just copied from a real paint tube. And then you just open it up and you pop in your paintbrushes and your pens and your other art materials. In it goes, all your art stuff, and then just close the lid, and there it is, your own Art Attack paint tube. Try it yourself. Brilliant! Hello, Head here. Now, to make one of those, you just need a clean, dry, empty, one litre washing up liquid bottle. Then very carefully cut the bottom off and almost all around the top, leaving a couple of centimetres to make a hinge. Squeeze the bottom end together, tape it closed and then stick a bit of rolled up newspaper around it. Tape on a lid and then papier-mâché the outside with bits of newspaper and PVA mixed with a little water. Go down inside the bottle a bit. When it's dry, just stick in a card collar and paint it to look like a tube of paint. Then use your Art Attack paint tube to keep all your Art Attack materials in good shape, eh?
business as usual. Now, that is what I and other professional firefighters would call a red hot picture. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh. Here's a great way of drawing a haunted house. Take a black and white wax crayon and a nice dark piece of paper, can be dark blue or dark grey, and near the top, just draw a round moon and then colour it in white. And just underneath the moon, take your black wax crayon and just draw a very simple haunted house. Doesn't need to be perfect or anything. Just roughly draw the shape. Put a few turrets in. And then turn your wax crayon on its edge and just go over all of those lines, just pressing really hard. And this will create some really spooky shadows. And then while your wax crayon is on its edge, just colour the whole thing in. And then just do your haunted house sitting on the top of a hill, again with your wax crayon on its edge. And you get this really spooky, grainy effect. And then just put in some detail on the house. Now you can put in some windows, make them a bit church-like. And you can put a gable on the top of the house. And, I think, a nice big doorway. Let's put some light shining out of the door and out of those windows. Just a few little smudges for the light, I think. And now I'm just going to take my black wax crayon and just do a little bit of sort of gloomy atmosphere all around the house. And I think I'll just put some detail down on the rocks here, maybe some steps coming down from the house. And what about spooky gravestone shapes? There always seems to be spooky gravestones around haunted houses, don't there? And don't do any of it perfectly, just hint at the shapes. And I'll tell you another thing you always get around haunted houses, these sort of very rickety railings. And a few little highlights with the white, or should I say moonlight. Just little bits of white along the edges, the edges facing the moonlight. Doesn't need to be perfect or anything. And I'm just going to shoot some rain across the picture. Nice diagonal flicks there. And just to finish it off, no haunted house would be complete without some bats. Watch this. Just squiggly M shapes. A couple there. And there it is. Try it yourself. A haunted house. My name's Simon, and I had an art step by making some realistic paper leaves. Hi, my name is Lisa. First, I collected some real autumn leaves from outside and drew around their shapes onto card. I then painted them, cut them out, and scored them down the middle with a pair of scissors. I then glued them onto cards if they had just fallen down from a tree. 
Ah, oh, what a great art attack, fallen paper leaves. And you know, there are so many different types of leaves and they tend to be lots of different shades of green when they're on the trees. But when they fall off the trees and die, they turn into these fabulous autumnal colours. Look at that lot. There's yellows in there, oranges, golds, ambers, reds and lovely rich browns. And they're great fun to copy because you can get some really realistic effects. Now, to make a leaf, just take a nice thick piece of white drawing paper and simply draw a leaf shape onto the paper. Now, if you want to do a complicated leaf shape, you could always copy a real one. In fact, you could draw around the leaf. Or you could try this, a little cheat this. You could fold your paper in half like that and then draw one half of your leaf shape down that folded edge. Like that. And when you cut that out, you have something that looks like that. And when you open it out, you have your full leaf shape. Now, whatever leaf shape you do, cut it out and then just completely scrunch it up. Now, you might think I'm mad, but watch this effect. If you open it out, you then have a nice crinkled leaf effect. And when you've got that, just take some water and a paintbrush and completely soak one side of your leaf with water. And then the good bit, the messy bit. Take some paint, different autumnal colours, and just blob them onto the wet leaf. Just blob those colours onto that water that's on your leaf and watch as all these colours, look at that, all these colours will just blend and run into each other. Now, it's a good idea to start with lighter colours in the middle of your leaf and work out towards the edge with darker colours. And this paint needs to be quite runny and you can always add some more water to it as you're doing it. Look at that. And it's just a case of letting the paint do its own thing and magically it turns into a leaf design. And when you've done it, leave it to one side to dry and when it's dry, look at that, all the colours have blended in and there's your leaf. And then just simply draw some of those middle veins that go up the centre of the leaves like that. And then if you just crunch it up again, because it's probably gone flat by now because of all that water, and fold it down the middle to give it a nice crunchy leaf shape. And there it is. And of course, you can do the same on both sides. And there's your leaf. And of course, there's lots of different leaf shapes you can do, different autumnal colours. And if you put a dab of glue on the back of them and stick them down, you can use them to decorate lots of different things. What about a homemade picture frame decorated with leaves? I think that looks really good. Or you could make some homemade greetings cards, again decorated with fallen leaves. And there's even a gift tag down the bottom there. Or you could decorate your posters or pieces of writing with your own fallen paper leaves. Try it yourself, paper leaves, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra! <laughs>